line that drops into the waters of Lake Gunnersville again and again. I love fishing. I start smiling and laughing. I thought, yeah, all you people that said I was crazy and stuff, and I think, yeah, look how happy I am. I'm doing something I love to do. I'm living a dream. 27-year-old Clay Dyer is a professional bass fisherman. He's never won a major bass fishing title. And in two years on the FLW circuit, he has yet to make the second day cut. Yet Clay might be the most admired man in fishing. I've never met anybody that had as sharp a mind as he has or that has the heart and the love and the passion for fishing that Clay has. So go ahead, take a good long look at him. He's used to it by now. For reasons that doctors still don't understand, Clay Dyer was born with neither a left leg nor a right leg, without a left arm, and with only a small appendage on his right shoulder. What was it like for you that first time you looked at him? Well, I think they caught me before I hit the floor. Uh, I almost passed out. What was Clay's birth like for you? Uh, disappointing. How so? Uh, I guess I didn't know what life would be like for him. But nothing could hold back the exuberant clay, who learned to do everything from throwing a frisbee to swinging a baseball bat, even playing basketball with his older brother. From the get-go, he was, I mean, he was his own person. Um, he didn't need any motivation. He always figured out a way to succeed. What would kids ask you when you were young about your condition? Um, same things they ask me now. You know, you know how you know how did you get like that? You know, how did you lose your arms and legs? Or the, you know, most of them come up and say, "Hey, you ain't got any arms and legs." And I'm like, "No, really." He was still just a boy of nine when he spent 20 minutes landing this 26-pound catfish. Fishing became Clay's passion, and he was determined to do it just like any other angler. Why didn't you want to use special equipment? Because I never wanted, I never wanted anybody to treat me special. I never treated myself special. You know, I wanted to do everything in life that everybody else does and do it the way they do it. You know, I wanted to do it with one hand the way they do it with two. When he goes fishing, Clay casts by tucking the rod underneath his jaw and whipping the rod around with a quick left to right twist. Then, placing the rod under his chin like a concert violinist, he reels in his catch. Come here, baby. Thank you, Lord. Who's your daddy, baby? He uses his teeth to unhook fish and change lures. And ties knots with his tongue. You've seen people tie a cherry stem with a tongue before. If he'll lay the bait on his arm, thread the line through the eye, and ties it with his mouth, and then he'll pull it down tight with his arm. And there you go. But during practice and competition, it gets hot on the lake. And his body's small size makes it impossible for Clay to sweat enough to stay cool. So when he overheats, Clay must take a quick swim. And with a little help, he gets back in the boat. Ah, that was better. After more than a decade as a pro, Clay's still climbing the bass fishing ranks. He fishes at the level just below the top pro tours in the country. I mean, that's just amazing that a kid with, it, with um, that many limitations can play at that high of a level. It's a mid-June dawn as Clay prepares himself for day one of this FLW season's final tournament in Lynette, Alabama. 
the two-man boats roar across the fog-shrouded lake, and the competition is on. All right, time to go get ugly. Yeah, thank you, Lord. After the end of day one, Clay is in position to make the first cut of his career on the FLW circuit. Here comes Clay Dyer from Hamilton, Alabama. Clay catches fish everywhere we go. Good to see you, Clay. North Star Lion now. He said North Star Lion. How will you feel if you make a cut? It'll be the, the, the biggest sense of accomplishment without winning. You know, it's just like those obstacles. You know, it's an obstacle yet that I hadn't that I hadn't accomplished, and I mean I'm going to. <laughs> I hope. I do better when the pressure's on. But on his third cast of day two. Clay sees his line snarl on a tree branch, and he loses precious casting time trying to free it. Moments later, Clay just misses landing a big one. Come here, baby. Yeah. In a full day's work on the lake, Clay can only catch a single fish. Oh, boy. Yeah. One fish on day two, worth one pound even. Clay Dyer, great job to you, Clay. It's not enough. It's ready, bro. Clay has missed the cut again. When he doesn't make it, I mean, your heart goes out to him because, me, you'd like to see him do it one time. One time. What will it be like for you when he does make the cut? It'll be really exciting. Oh. Be emotional. And it'll happen. But Clay will make the cut one day in one of these pro tournaments, and that'll be, I mean, it'll he'll just bring the house down. And so Clay returns to Lake Gunnersville and casts his line, every cast dropping into the water with the hope that this time a fish will bite. And why not? The power of Clay's hope can already be seen on the faces of those who love him best. What do you wish you could give him? Um, the, the obvious answer would maybe be, you know, maybe uh, you know, a, a set of arms and legs. He doesn't want that. Um, that's probably the last thing he wants. He talks about having a heart, soul, and mind. And that's all you need. He says he has everything he needs. If I know somebody's watching me, you know, Especially when I'm doing something, you know, using, you know, you know, feeding myself or just doing something, whatever it may be. I try to do it in a way that somebody says, I want what that guy's got. I want him to be able to just look at me and say, hey, he's determined, he's a winner. We're so glad you all turned out to hear Clay speak. Amen. And I tell you what, uh, without further ado, my new giant of a good friend is coming on stage here, Mr. Clay Dyer. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank y'all. Good evening. Good evening. evening. Y'all sound like y'all had sleep. <laughs> y'all ought to get your big old belly full of food, now you ready to go to sleep. You know what's going on? It's a pleasure and honor to be here uh, th this evening, and uh, I, uh, I didn't want to wake anybody up when I got here about 1 o'clock this morning. We had, uh, we just finished up with a national tournament at Bass Southern Open on Smith Lake in my home state of Alabama, and uh, we, we got home over the weekend and kind of got things uh, straightened up, ready to go, and uh, we, we left driving up here yesterday evening. A good friend of mine, uh, Kyle, he's backstage, he drove up here. Uh, normally my wife is with me, but we've been gone so much, so we have to take care of her dad. Uh, back home and then some things will need to be done so she stayed back to uh, to help with him 
And she sends her best. She said, for me to tell you guys, she loved you all. She was praying for you. And she hopes you get to come back. And uh, hopefully, good Lord willing, in this tournament this week, uh, of course, our, our son, my, my stepson personally, but uh, we call him our son, uh, Brandon Lester, is one of the elite anglers. And uh, God willing, if he if he does well and is up close to the top, then we're going to be turning right around Friday and Saturday and driving back over here. So, and I can tell you, from what I've seen of Georgetown, South Carolina, just today, for a few hours, I was out in town riding around, and I go and eat lunch. You guys have a beautiful city, a beautiful place up here. Uh, everybody is just treated us like we're family, and uh, it's been like being at home. And I really appreciate the hospitality. And uh, has anybody ate over at the, I think it's uh, the fish room or something like that, uh, the seafood place over on the bay? River room. River room. I'm terrible with names. My memory's about like my finger. It ain't real long. <laughs> but yeah, the river room is when we ate lunch, and it was phenomenal. And uh, oh, I cannot say enough uh, thank you to Scott Proctor and the Proctor family, and also to Rick Hemingway and, uh, and Backwoods of Quail Preserve. Um, they provided awesome accommodations last night. And, uh, you know, when I went in there, I loved the kind of outback, rustic-type look. And uh, when we pulled up at the cabin about 1 o'clock this morning, they had, they had the, the, the port slide on, like Motel 6, Tom Bowden said he'd leave the light on for us. Rick, Rick Hemingway left the light on for us. Brother, and I appreciate that. And uh, it was comfortable, it was wonderful, and nowhere else in the United States have I ever woke up at 8.30 in the morning with the sound of 12 gauges going off. And, uh, and I love it. And I woke up to shoot and skeet, and when I first heard it, I woke up, I thought, what in the world? And it dawned on what it was. I said, I kind of like waking up that noise. I can get used to that a little bit. But uh, I, want, I want to thank them for their accommodations. They provided us a wonderful place to stay, and uh, it, it was just awesome. And we, we, we hope we get to come back this weekend and I'll be able to get to hang out with you guys. Uh, and ladies, I, I know uh, when we were at lunch today, I was taking some pictures on the phone out there on the boardwalk uh, by the river and uh, by the bay, and I was sending those pictures to my wife, and she was like, oh, honey, it's beautiful. You know, I wish I was there. And she was like, it never fails when I don't get to go with you to start with. You always go to these wonderful places. And uh, I was like, honey, I know. Maybe you get to come back with me this weekend, and it'll all be good. But how many fishermen do we have out here tonight? Quite a few of them. All right, I got, a, I got a very important question I want to ask you before we get started tonight. How many of you out here has ever caught your first fish on a zip cup? Nice, quite a few of you. Well, I caught my very first fish, which was about a nine-pound catfish, sitting on my grandfather's lap, sitting on his farm pond bank. And the fish just about drug me out of his lap and drug me out in the lake. And I followed it and got it in, but when I did, boy, that just turned the heat up on wanting to fish. And want, you know, I've always been a competitor. I've always been a country boy from Alabama and a country boy that loves Jesus. And when I grew up fishing, it just really, that, that catching that first fish really cemented that, that fire, that passion that made him want to compete. So that being said, I want to share a quick story with you, and we're going to get into the message tonight. But uh, when I caught that first fish and ignited that fire and really got going, you know, I thought to myself, well, I've kept fish for a while, and I thought, you know, Catfish are nice, they're awesome and all that. Man, they just don't do what bass do. You know, they, you know, man, I can make a living fishing for bass. I can fish for a lot of money fishing for bass, so I won't go fish for bass. So with that being said, I thought that when you had to fish for bass, that you know you had to have the top of the line equipment, right? I thought that is any golfers in here. I know there's a few golfers, I see men, I know there's a few golfers. One brother over here got a head there. Right here. We're playing all. We're playing all, buddy. Is your wife or girlfriend or something right there going to get on teacher and say you love golf? Amen, brother. Well, let me ask you something. In golf, did you ever think the more you paid for that club, the farther the straighter you're going to hit the little white ball? I learned a long time ago. It ain't the name of the club. It's how you want to play it. That's right. It's how you swing your club, ain't it? That's right. My, my daddy and my brother, my brother used to play golf professionally on the teardrop tour, which is right on the Nike tour. Well, they used to implement that thought that the more they paid for a club, if the father or son didn't get the ball. Well, I always used to kid them that I never understood why they wanted to work so hard to get that little white golf ball <laughs> in that little cup just to take it out and go to the next hole. And my brother looked at me and he said, well, he said, you moron, it's kind of like your philosophy. I don't know why you work so hard to catch fish, just turn it back loose again. And I told him, I said, well, I don't eat them. Well, I said, I don't eat bass, I eat catfish and crappie. But long story short, I used to think that to catch that bass, that I had to have the most expensive rod and reel the money would buy. Well, with that being said, I saved up my money over the years when I was a kid, and I bought me up, I don't know, six or eight different rod and reel combos, 
and you know, was getting in, getting in my young teenage years and all that. And uh, you know you're from the country when instead of when you get to be 16, instead of asking for a sports car or a four-wheel drive truck, you ask for a bass boat. Well, <laughs> I wasn't asking for the bass boat yet, but they had already bought me a boat. So I had these rods and reels saved up and bought up that I never will forget. About two weeks before my 14th birthday, I was sitting home one night. My mother and my dad were in the living room with me. And Daddy had ESPN on, Sports Center was on TV, and he had the newspaper, which that was his routine in the evenings. He'd come in from work, he'd pick up the newspaper, he'd watch Sports Center. <laughs> Mother was sitting over there watching a, uh, read the book. So immediately I had like two strikes going against me. You know, Mom and Dad were not, you know, they were in their own world, watching TV, reading the paper. Mr. Clay over here was wanting Rod Reed. Well, I'm flipping open my Bass Pro Shop catalog, and I look, and I find me this, I find me this high dollar rod drill there. It's like, normally 700 bucks, it's discounted down to 350. Which in my eyes, because it was discounted 50%, I thought, okay, it's on like Donkey Kong, you know? <laughs> so I looked over there at my dad, and I said, Dad, he looked over, he said, what, son, what do you want? And I said, Dad, I said, you see this rod drill right here in the Bass Pro catalog? He said, yeah, what about it? I said, I want you to know this rod drill is normally 700 bucks, it's 350. He said, yes, I what? I said, my birthday is in about three weeks. I'll be 14 years old. It'll be a great birthday present. Then he said, well, how much did you say it was again? I said, 350. He looked at me and he said, son, he said, I love you. He said, I don't care if it's Christmas. I don't care if it's any other special holiday. I don't care if it's your birthday or what it is. I am not spending 350 bucks on your rod and reel. So being that loving, sweet, kind 13-year-old that I was, some of y'all are getting yard and over on this. Y'all know, know what I did, right? What do y'all think I did? I kept on. I was told no, and I kept on. Well, I kept on, I kept on keeping on, and when I kept trying to sell to Daddy why I needed this rod and reel, Daddy's face started getting about red as the red on my sponsor jersey. And I knew when his face started getting red, I said, oh, this ain't good. I better simmer down a little bit. Well, then I asked him again, I said, Daddy, come on, this rod and reel's got the top of the line components, and it's high price. Well, then Daddy holds up his right hand, and he puts his thumb, tip of his thumb, about a quarter inch below the tip of his index finger. Y'all don't know what that meant. That meant I was that close to get my hind end toward it. <laughs> so when I saw him do that, I said, okay, I'm going to simmer down, I'm going to calm down. So I kind of got over there in my little chair, and I just got all quiet like good little boys should do. And I was watching Daddy, when I saw his blood pressure, you know, going on down and on down, and his face flushed back out, though so I thought a manageable category, I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to have to pay some consequences, but I'm about to get me this rod and reel. I'm about to get it. I looked over there while I'd been scheming and scheming, and I thought and I thought. And before I go any further in this story, I want you young people in here tonight. We're going to have an agreement, okay? How many kids we have in here that are 14 or under? Quite a few of them. We're going to have an agreement. I'm going to give you all some advice. Do not try this at home. <laughs> I looked over at my dad, and he had the paper up in his face, and I said, Dad! He threw down that paper and all he was hot. He said, what, son, what do you want? He said, I done told you you ain't getting that rod and reel. I looked at him and I said, Daddy, I said, I want you to think about something. And I put it on the poor little pouty face. And I said, I want you to think about something, Dad. I said, think about all the money that I've saved you in 13 years not having to buy me shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, Daddy looked over at my mother, and my mother kind of shrugged her shoulders at him, and she said, what are you going to say to that? <laughs> Next thing I knew, he pulled out his wallet, and handed me a credit card, and he said, here, son, order that buy and build. I don't want to hear another word out of you all night. So, not only did it work, I need to get a high idea with it, and life is grand. Like I said, young boys and girls do not buy that at home. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and my privilege to be here tonight be able to share with you, and as I prayed about what I was going to say tonight on the way over here, you know, this day and time, of everywhere I could go with this message, of everything I could say, this day and time, I feel like the message I have tonight is the message that everybody in this room can resonate with, and it is my hope and my prayer tonight that before you leave this place, that you will leave this place encouraged, inspired, and you leave this place a better person than what you were when you came in. Amen. That's my hope and that's my prayer. You know, we all, can, we all can understand that in life, sometimes there's adversity, sometimes there's obstacles. I have people everywhere I go, I've been blessed to do this since 1997. 
So I'm going on 20 years that I've done this, that I've been a professional angler slash motivational <laughs> speaker. My friend, I have done everything in this world that a lot of people would ever get a chance, probably honestly, to do in this world. Uh, Lord, I have played sports. I played, I played baseball, football, basketball. Uh, you know, I have hunted. I have been all over the country. I've been to Canada three times. I've been to Mexico three times. I mean, I've traveled a lot of places. And I've been blessed to be on the cover of magazines. I've been blessed to be on the cover of Bassmaster. Um, I've been on ESPN. I've been on CNN Headline News. I mean, I've been been out there and been a lot of places and had the honor of being on a lot of covers and, and things of that nature. But I want you to know that right now, that that that, that fame, that prestige, that that uh, you know things of that nature are not what drives Clay Dyer. Those are honors, and I'm privileged that I had the opportunity to be on those those things. But that's not what got what has gotten Clay Dyer to where he is at. You see, I always tell people I get to live my dream. I get I get whenever I go all across the country, whether I'm in my truck and boat and we're in a tournament or whether we pull up and we're getting ready to do an appearance like tonight or whatever, I have so many people say, man, how in the world do you do what you do? You know, how in the world is a man that is born the way you were born this? How in the world do you do what you do and not have any special adaptations, not have any special equipment? And I tell them, I say, well, number one is I told you I get to live my dream. It was my dream, and just like a lot of you kids, how many of you kids in this audience tonight could honestly say that it's your dream to be a pro athlete? Raise your hand. Dude, that's awesome. And those kids that didn't raise their hand, I'm going to come get you. <laughs> Most all of you raise your hand. we got some shy ones out there, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, to me, when you're blessed to get to live your dream and do what you dream of doing, when I was these kids' age, I sat there and I said, okay, I want to be a pro athlete. I wanted to be maybe a pro football player, pro basketball player, something of that nature. And in all reality, I really felt like, well, you know, maybe I have a better shot of being a pro fisherman. You know, were they going to draft me to play in the NFL? You know, to be out there playing on the field against guys that were six foot four, 270, 280 pounds, whatever. You know, I could do that. Were they going to draft me? Probably not. But you know what? Well, I could have easily let that 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 negativity of what a lot of people call negativity, stopped me. Instead, all I did was channel it and use it as energy to fuel it towards what I could do to make it to the very top and make it to the very top of whatever profession I wanted to do. And that was being a professional fisherman. And I want you to think about this as I told you a moment ago, the word dream. Think about how dream is spelled, obviously, D-R-E-A-M. People say, Clay, how do you do what you do, man? You don't have any special equipment. No, I don't. I'm very blessed. A lot of you pulled up out front. You probably saw the big Bill Penny toy on the tongue. How many of you, now that I tell you this, probably going to be scared to death to know that a half-armed man with no fingers drives that thing about 85 miles an hour down the interstate. <laughs> I have no wrecks on my record yet. And I have kept me and my wife out of quite a few. I do have one speeding uh, reward to my name. I got that back in January because I tried to make it home to my wife for her birthday. So she let me slide on that. But I said that to say this. It was a dream of mine for 20 years to drive. I was legal of age to drive for over 20 years. And God blessed me with some people in my past, such as Bill Penny Toyota, who graciously stepped up and furnished me a big Toyota Toyota, a $60,000 vehicle to drive. Alabama Vocation Department Rehab stepped up and put over a $100,000 kit in that truck so I or somebody else could drive. And I, you know, here I am. God has blessed me in so many ways to, do, to live my dream and do what I do. And you think about the dream, and you say, well, Clay, how in the world did you get started to get to where you're at? That's what I want to talk to you about tonight. Whether you're, whether you're five years old, like some of these children are tonight, maybe you're fixing to retire, maybe you've had dreams your whole life, I want you to know that no matter what age, what number might be beside your name and your age, all dreams are possible. You're looking at living proof of it happening. Now, how does it happen? Number one, the first letter in dream is D. What's D stand for? Determination. What's determination to me? Three words. If you guys want to take notes, if you want to video me, I don't matter. Don't matter to me. Do anything you want to. Take pictures, whatever. What's determination to me? I sum it up in three words. Never give up. Plain and simple. Never give up. You say, Clay, that's awesome. Well, the reason I say never give up is simply because of this. Anything that you want to do in life, you're going to face adversity. You're going to face obstacles. I face adversity. I face obstacles every day of my life. Why? Because the man named the devil is always trying to stop what God's trying to bless. 
The devil wants you to be, he wants you to be mad at the world. He wants you to be upset and not have any joy or any peace or any hope. He wants to, he wants to distinguish what God wants to bless. He wants to put adversity in your path because he wants you to get mad and give up and say, you know what, I quit. I'm done. I, I don't have the word quit in my vocabulary. What, what is to me, what is never give up? That's why I say if I can, you can. What, what is determination to me? What is never given up? Is you got to have enough determination right here in your mind that whatever adversity, whatever obstacles you face, you're not going to let them defeat you, but you're going to defeat it. The story of David and Goliath in the Bible is one of my favorite stories. Why? Because Goliath is supposed to be this big Philistine champion. You see, he was in all this armor and everything else. David was a little Rudy Hansen dude. That they tried to put armor on him. He said, I don't need all this armor. All I want to go to battle with is my Lord Almighty. What did David do? He went out there with Goliath and all this battle armor on. He went down and approached him. And Goliath looked at him and laughed at him. Basically looked at him and said, I are sending you to fight me. You see, addictions, all these other things that tried to defeat us. They want to look at us. They want to intimidate us. They want to knock us down. They want to destroy us. They want to defeat us. But we, we, you don't have to live in that garbage. You don't have to live in defeat when you've got Jesus Christ. Just like David walked up to Goliath and put the stone in the sling and pulled it back and planted the stone right there at Goliath's head, killed him dead in a hammer. What did he do? He got over and cut his head off and claimed he was a champion. The Philistine thought he was a champion. David, David showed him, what's up? Now I'm going to tell you something. You can show your all your adversity, what's up? I go around this world and I hear a lot of people talk about how big their problems are. I hear people tell them, man, I'm telling God how big my problem is. Let me tell you what I do. I tell my problem how big my God is. Amen. That's what I do. Why? Because I'm never going to give up. I'm never going to lay down. I'm never going to quit. I'm going to have enough determination in my mind that I'm going to work in conjunction with my heart, and I'm never going to let anything knock me down or defeat me. My friend, the mind and the heart are the two most incredible, two most powerful things when they're working together in perfect harmony with each other. <laughs> nothing, nothing can beat you when you allow your heart and your mind to work. That, my friends, is determination. What is our, our resources? What's resources? Resources is focusing on things, not, not focusing on things you don't have. You understand what I'm saying? How many of you would have thought when I decided some 19 years ago I was gonna be a professional fisherman? How many of you would have looked at me and said, wait a minute now, dude, wait a minute. You got a half on, and you gonna do what? Dude, you got a half on, you gonna play football? Yeah. Get out of three-point stance and get lower than me. <laughs> I'll promise you, when I stick my kneecap, my helmet in your kneecap, you will go down. <laughs> I know. It. it works. What's resource? Don't focus on what's missing, guys. Focus on what's available. Yeah. It had been very easy for me to look down and say, you know what? Poor pitiful me. Let me whine, let me cry. I don't have legs. I don't have arms. Why, why, why? I can't do this. I can lay around a boat and drive to the plains and you know what? I don't have legs. I don't have arms. I'm not able to do this. No, that ain't what I did. What did I do? I said, you know what? The Bible says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It also says all things are possible for those who believe in Christ. What else does the Bible say? Psalm 62, God is my rock. With him I will not be shaken. My friend, I can very easily look up and, and whine and complain. I said, you know what? I can't do this. I'm going to lay down and give up. But you know what? This old boy ain't got that in his heart. He ain't got that in his mind. What did I do? I said, I've got the number one resource that drives me, that pushes me, and that's my faith in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You say, Clay, how do you do what you do? Because now my number one resource that gives me the strength, that gives me the drive, that gives me the energy to fight every day is my strength in my Lord and my Savior. And my friend, I can tell you tonight, Whatever else that you've been focusing on in your life, trying to draw your strength from, if you feel like you're getting defeated, if you feel like you're getting beat down, beat up, you feel like you're losing, my friend, if you'll put Jesus Christ first in your life, you're looking at living proof of what? Not giving up. And let Jesus lead you and guide you of where it will get you and what it will do. It will take you to the top and you will stay there. What's that for resource? What's that for resource? E. What's E? Effort. What's effort? Plain and simply what it says it is. Don't you go out there during the day and not give it not give it 100% effort and then come whining and complaining to me when you ain't got something you want. You, you want to get in a boat with somebody flying down the river running about 70 miles an hour and be 21-foot ranger, get up there on the front deck and be going at it like I go, 
for 14 hours a day sometimes, 16 hours, however many hours there are, they light and dark on a practice day. Going out there and fishing as far as I can fish on tournament day. What's effort? I'm going to share a quick little story with you about effort. To this, to some people, you may not get this. I understand that. But I want to tell you what effort is. Every time when I'm out there fishing and I'm trying to figure out how to catch those fish, sometimes, depending on what conditions I'm faced with during the day, I may have to cut and retie my baits 50 times a day. And you say, what's the big deal about that? Well, it's not to most people because they normally cut and retie using their hands. Well, when I cut and retie my baits, I bleed every time. Why? Because not having fingers, there's other ways of doing it that are easier, but it takes longer. So what do I do? I'm trying to be as efficient as I can with about eight or nine hours fishing tournament a day. I want to save every second I can save it because if my bait is not in that water, I'm not going to catch one. So I try to do everything I can do to maximize my time on the water. So tying on my knots, what do I do? I bounce the hook on my arm, put the line in my mouth, use my lips and my teeth, I feed the line through the hook eye, I wrap it up using my tongue and my teeth, and when I get it wrapped like I want to, and I put the line through the loop, I bury the hook point in my hand and pull the hook down tight. You probably can't see it from back there, but my, my hand right now looks terrible because I just got out of a tournament. It looks like I've had my hand under a sewing machine with just being jabbed hundreds of times a day. You say, Clay, why do you go through that? You say, Clay, there's not a better way. There might be a better way, a less painful way, but it takes long. You say, Clay, why do you do that? I do that because I want to win. I do that because I'm willing to put forth that kind of effort. I'm willing to put forth that kind of passion because that's how successful I want to be in my life. I'm willing to put my body through pain, through, 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 through pain like that, through heartache, because I want to be able to be successful. And that's the very best way that I've learned how to do it. Effort, my friends, will take you farther than, than, than most things in life other than God. I want to tell you something about effort. Those days when you wake up and you say, you know what, I really don't feel like going to work today. How many of you ever woke up with a headache or flu or whatever and don't feel like going to work? Well, guess what? If there's somebody else out there a lot of times, I know it feels that way. There's a lot of days I wake up, just like this past tournament. I had got fish a few days. They had some bad weather come through. They canceled day one of our tournament. Day two, I beat the alarm up by like an hour because I was fired up and ready to go. Go out there and fish hard all day. I come in. I was exhausted. I was wore out. I was in the last, or uh, excuse me, next to the last flight that day. I finally get to bed about 9.30 at night when the alarm goes off at 3.30 the next morning. Believe you me, when that alarm went off, homeboy was tired. Homeboy wanted to roll over and lay there for about another three or four hours and then get up and go fishing. And you know what I said? You know what? I've got a Bassmaster Classic I'm trying to qualify for. I'm out here living my dream, doing what I love doing. Guess what? Get your butt up and let's go. That's what I told myself. As tired as I was, exhausted as I was, I got out of that bed, went and cracked open what I call my Jesus juice, which is my Starbucks caffeine. I got in a hot shower, got all loosened up. When I come out of there, so and I, was, I was fired up and jacked up and ready to rock and roll. How do we do what we do? It's called putting forth the effort. And it's called the next thing, which is A. What's A? Does anybody want to guess what A is? Bingo. Who's that attitude up here? You in the green jacket? You the winner of the night's prize. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what that is? I ain't got no idea. You just want something. <laughs> which that's what I'm giving you, a and draw club. A is attitude. My friends, what's attitude? It basically comes out every day when you wake up, when you wake up. We all wake up, whether we realize it or not, with two choices and one decision. What's that? The kind of attitude we're going to live with that day. You can either feel sorry for yourself, whine and cry about the things you don't have, whine and cry about all your aches and pains and everything else, and say, you know what, feel pitiful me. Or you can wake up in the morning and you can make up in your mind and you can say, you know what? I'm going to be a champion today because nothing's going to hold me back. Nothing's going to stop me. It doesn't matter what adversity I have to face. It doesn't matter what obstacle I'm going to face. I'm going to be a winner today. Nobody's going to stop me. I'm going to be a winner. You make up in your mind to do it, and that's how it gets done. My friend, when you think about determination, and what did I say about determination? We're going to see how many of you listen. What did I say about determination? Amen. Never give up. Great job. When you focus on determination, and you focus on never giving up, you take what resources you were blessed with and don't focus on what you don't have. You focus on 100% effort each and every day, and you keep a champion mental attitude, 
then the last thing on the list, other than success, is M. And what's M? M is motivation. Why do I say motivation? Because everybody, anywhere I go, asks me, Clay, what motivates you to do what you do? What motivates you to get up and go out there at 3 o'clock in the morning when you're more out tired and you ain't caught a fish the day before? What motivates you to do that? What motivates you to drive and you go to so many cities a year in your truck, you're so wore out when you get there you'll forget where you're at sometimes? What motivates you to do what you do? I'll tell you what motivates me. People say, does the money of winning a tournament motivate you? It helps. Honestly. I mean, if it didn't, you know, it has to be part of what we do. I mean, there's a lot of money out there to be made fishing, but there's a lot of money to be lost, too. But a lot of people say, is that what motivates you? No. That's not what truly motivates me to do everything I do. I want to beat the best. I don't want to show up to the tournament. And just like these elites for the Bassmaster Open, if I showed up, I don't want anybody to come to me and look at me and say, Clay, because you're the only fisherman out here that physically like you are, that says you're quote unquote disabled or you're in a wheelchair or you're handicapped. My friend, let me tell you something. The word disabled and the word handicapped are just that, they're words. You're only as handicapped and disabled as what you allow yourself to be. And I want to tell you, if somebody wanted to walk up to me and look at me and hand me that trophy and say, here, because you're in a wheelchair, because you look handicapped, because you look disabled, I want to give you that trophy. You know what I'll tell them? Keep it. No, sir. You ain't going to give it to me like that. If I don't go out here in Fannin Square and be Kevin Van Dam or any of these other guys that are on the elites or the opens, I don't want that trophy. I want to earn it. I want to know that I've went out there and lined up toe to toe with all of my brothers on this tour. And believe you me, we're all very close to each other. In between, whatever time we blast off and time we weigh in, we're trying to beat each other's eyes out. At the end of the day, we're all hugging necks and we all love each other. We're family and we're brothers. And we're there to pick each other up. What motivates me? I'll tell you what motivates me. What motivates me to drive all over this country thousands and thousands of miles a year. Fly, fly however many miles I fly a year. What motivates me to get up when I'm give out tired and just want to sleep or anything else. What motivates me when people just like you and you and you. When y'all send me emails, when y'all send me Facebook messages, if you've got my phone number and you send me a text or a call, I tell you what motivates me. When I get the calls that says, Clay, I want you to know I was facing alcohol addiction, a drug addiction, and I was about to commit suicide. And I want you to know that because of what you stand for and what you believe in and what you, the way you live your life, I want you to know I turned my life around and I want to be a champion. My friends, that's what motivates play life. That's what makes my heart tick and what, that's what makes me do what I do and that's what makes me love. It. My friends, I want you to know today Whatever obstacle, whatever adversity may be out there that may be trying to stop you from doing what you love doing, making your dream come true, if you will take determination and never give up and focus on what resources you have available and don't dwell on what's missing and give it 110% effort each and every day of your life and keep a positive champion mental attitude and you stay motivated, my friend, you will be successful. I want to take this opportunity as I close tonight. I want to take this opportunity to thank all the wonderful partners that helped make all this possible. I know earlier I, thought, I thank the Proctor family and the Hemingway family. I also want to thank my wonderful partners in Shipley's Donuts and the Orca Coolers and the Gator Guards and the Livingston Lures, Ranger Boats, Bill Penny Toyota, all these companies, Mercury Ranger, uh, Motor Guy, all these companies that are on this jersey that I represent. Nick, when you're out there somewhere, I want you to know the reason why I run these guys' products. Whether they, whether they help us financially or they help us for product, the reason I run their product is because I believe in it and, and, and it helps me do what I do to the very best of my ability. People say, you run what you run because they pay you. Ladies and gentlemen, I could, I, could, I could be with several different companies that I have turned down over the years because either maybe their morals don't line up with mine or something like that. But I can tell you this, I run what I run and I utilize what I utilize because I believe that I know that they will get me to the top and I want to have the very best equipment that I believe in my heart that I can have to give me the very best chance to win. Because I know God's going to do his part. Clay Dyer's got to do his. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for your time tonight. May God bless you. Thank you.
Personal best fish, bass, uh, bass uh, that I weighed, weighed uh, nine pounds and four ounces that I actually weighed. Right here, young man. Most I caught in one day? Dude, I have no idea. More than I can count on my one hand, I can tell you that. <laughs> I wish I honestly knew the number, but I, I've had days I've caught over 100 in a day, but I, I don't know the exact number. There's been a bunch of them. Clay, the first time you heard your father said that he was disappointed uh, during your birth, um, how did that resonate with you and your soul and give you more uh, a driven spirit to do what you do? Well, what was the very first part of what you asked, buddy? I'm sorry. The very first time that you heard your father said that he was disappointed because yes. of your birth, how did it actually uh, make you drive, your drive even back that much better? Well, first of all, I think, I've talked to my dad about this many times, and the reason my dad was disappointed, it was because he felt like I might not have the same opportunities to do the same things other kids, you know, could do. Because I've got one older brother that's 30, that's uh, 41, and um, he, you know, he is, he is, he looks like a normal, you know, all his hands, fingers, ex uh, extremities and all that. But I think, honestly, being born the way I've been born has, has just naturally given me that much more drive because it, it, it makes me appreciate what I have in life. And you know, dude, we're all human. And um, I have fallen short, and only because of the grace of God about where I'm at today. And you know, with me, I, people say, man, you know, I'll go somewhere, but like, dude, you're a superstar. You're, I'm, no, no, I ain't Jesus a superstar. You know, I, I'm not, I'm Clay Dyer. I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a sinner saved by grace, brother. That's what I am. And I, I, people say, well, I had the guy joke one time. I said, well, man, how you put your legs on? One leg at a time? I said, one hip at a time. <laughs> but uh, I'm happy y'all got that real quick, didn't you? <laughs> but uh, I think it really made me just appreciate what, I, what I've been blessed with more. And it's, and it's maybe not take things for granted, you know, like I probably would have had I been born with hands and fingers and stuff. Dude, if I had hands and fingers, I'd be like, how do you use these things? What do you do, you know? Great question. How long does it take you to catch a regular like fish, like just a bass, like several inches? How long does it take me to catch one? <laughs> well, if he bites me from about me to you with my big old seven eleven loose lifting stick and twenty five pound line, it don't take me long. I normally I normally set the hook, put him in a boat on a hook set. <laughs> <laughs> Good question, buddy. Anybody else? Right here in the middle. Right here, buddy. I'm coming to hear you. Oh, Over here. What's your favorite lure you fish with? Favorite lure I fish with? Anything that catches a fish. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm kidding, buddy. Um, my favorite lure, if I had to, if I had to trip it down to one, um, boy, that's tough. Because I've, I've, Lord knows, if you saw my boat in my shop, it looks like Bass Pro Shops. So, um, <laughs> I try to be a versatile fisherman and do whatever it takes to catch them under whatever condition. But if I had to pick one lure that I could catch them on, it'd be something like a, uh, what's called a Livingston walking boss, which is a lot like a Zara Spook. It's a walking bait. It's a topwater bait, and I love it on topwater. I love watching them blow up on it, explode on it, and uh, I'm telling you, it's awesome, man. I love topwater. Great question, bud. Back here in the back. How do I cast? How do I cast? I put the rod up under my left jawbone, between my jawbone and my collarbone, and I put the, my, my chin on the reel to bash the button, and I feathered the line on my bottom lip, and I put my arm up under the front of the rod so I can balance it, you know, a lot better, and I twist and torque my body around, much like a baseball swing or a golf swing, to, you know, to project the lure where I need it to go. Um, I know me explaining it to you is terrible, so the best thing I can tell you, buddy, when you get around the internet, go to my website at claydyer.net, and there's some videos on there, and you can actually see how I do it on those videos. <clears throat> right here, young man. How do you use the bathrooms? How do you use the bathrooms? Like any other boy, son. Like any other boy. <laughs> Hello, <love you>, kids. <laughs> right here, young man. How do you drive? Like, how do I drive? You're talking about the truck or the boat? Or both? Oh, yes. The high dive of the truck basically, um, I've got a system that lifts my wheelchair up in the back of it, but the way I drive, there's a button on the front of my headrest and a mask that turns on the system like turning on the ignition. 
And I've got a touch screen that I that I press buttons on the touch screen. It looks like an iPad screen that cranks the truck up. And then once it gets cranked, I've got a uh, I've got a joystick built into my door on my driver's side. It's got a U-shaped bracket that goes around my left shoulder. And I put my shoulder up in it. I push forward for brake and back for gas. And I just put my arm. I've got a thing on my steering wheel that I can put my arm in. But sometimes I just put my arm in it and steer it. Or I put my arm just on the side of the steering wheel and put pressure on it. You know, to turn it like that. So that, that's how I drive the truck. How I drive the boat is basically the same way. I get in there and, uh, you know, once I push the button to turn the key to crank it, I've got a uh, throttle stick on the side that does the accelerator. And I just put my arm on the steering wheel and, and I go. And I know two speeds in the boat. It's idle or wide open. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but that's what I used to be like. <laughs> when I got slapped by my dad's cap years ago, that meant slow down. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So I see that you started fishing at five mm -hmm. and tournament fishing at 15. But I'm curious, at what age did you give your life to Christ? Give my life to Christ when I was uh, 18, right after I graduated high school. Yes, ma'am. June, June of 1996. My most awesome day of my life. Besides marrying my beautiful wife. Clay. Yes, sir. Once you turned pro, how hard was it to convince sponsors to back you? You know, honestly, um, it, I don't want to say it, was, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't what I would say hard. Um, it was it was more or less really and truthfully getting them past the point of realizing that they shot a commercial on me. A lot of America today, you know how America, they, they jump on anything. It's dramatic and try to judge it. And they wanted to shoot commercials on me, but they didn't, they didn't think they were, they were uh, exploiting me and stuff, which I never took it that way. I, I, I love doing it. I had a ball doing it. And uh, once they realized they could do that without having America jump on their back and criticize them, you know, it was, I mean, it was on. I mean, I've been, uh, I've been very blessed in all my years of doing this. Um, right now, we've got 17 sponsors on our team, and uh, I like calling them partners, because uh, I'm, I'm partnering with them, and they're partnering with me. But uh, of the 17 that I've got now in my life, I've only had four that have either, you know, came on board with us, and maybe they couldn't go forward, or they, you know, had something happen on there, and they couldn't go forward. But I thank God that, that I've never done anything you know, to warrant them not to spot for me once they pick me up and, you know, have, have, have partnered with me. So it was more of a thing of, of once they figured out that I really wanted to do this and, and wanted to make a career of it, you know, they, 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 were, they, were, they were a lot more open about trying to talk to me and partner and everything. And I'll give you a quick little example. We were filming a commercial two years ago for Orca Coolers, and, uh, the owner, or one of the owners back then, who I was very good friends with, he actually passed away a couple months ago, back in January. And uh, two years ago in October, we were filming, we were filming a commercial, and uh, he had a great idea. When he called me about it, when he told me about it, I said, dude, I love it. Well, our commercial was, they had a big old 124 cooler, which I could barely fit inside. And we were out there, and the, the, the music tone was the theme of Andy Griffin. And they showed him on the dock fishing like he was getting all hot. Well, I got inside the cooler and shut the lid, and I'm holding the power aid. And just sitting there holding it, looking up. I'm a dirt on. I'm looking up green and holding it between my nose and between my chin and my arm. And he shows me come up to the two cooler, and he opens it up, and he says, Oh, thanks, lady. Grabs the power aid and slams the lid back on. <laughs> and we had a ball filming. And like people, you know, we had a couple people like, I cannot believe you did that, that, that guy. And, uh, but a lot of people, it, it like went viral, and we loved it. And we had a ball with it. That's a great question. Yes, sir. Needless to say, you are a, uh, an inspiration to, to all of us. And uh, I certainly appreciate your being here. But having said that, have you had this attitude all your life? Or did you wake up one morning and say, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going to change. No, honestly, I've kind of had this attitude my whole life. Um, my brother, you probably caught it in the video, my brother made a statement on the video. He said, you know, that I didn't need any motivation. And, uh, you know, I don't want to sound arrogant by saying this, but, you know, to me, I don't have to be motivated because I'm self-motivated. And I just, I push myself so hard to be the very best I can be. But uh, I have I have a lot of people who, who have been very instrumental in, in motivating me, you know, just from... They don't even know they motivated me, but because I've watched what they've come through and what they have accomplished and how successful they are, 
It's made me push myself that much harder. And you can ask my wife, my family, you know, whoever. I'm, I'm my own worst critic. I mean, I'm the one that just like, you know, I've been in the slump for two years and three years in fishing. And uh, this past week, I was blessed to bring in two back-to-back -back limits, which is not most in most people's eyes. But sometimes when you're trying to get back to a level, when you're, when you're not performing where you know you're capable of or where you once were, you know, sometimes it doesn't come overnight. Sometimes you've got to crawl before you can walk, you got to walk before you can run. And it's like I said during that tournament, sometimes you got to get the train back on the tracks before you can, you know, really build up momentum. And uh, during that tournament, when I came in, you know, my wife was just ecstatic. And I mean, did I get a check? No, I missed a check 50 spots. Um, but I didn't finish at the bottom of the pack. And she kept telling me, honey, I'm so proud of you, you know, you know. And she, get, she finally looked at me the other night and she said, she said, you know, honey, you know, you grand and you, you've been crazy. She said, you got like your mad at yourself. And I said, well, I'm not mad at myself. I said, I grew up on that lake. I know that lake like the back of my hand. And I said, I'm frustrated because I know what I'm capable of doing, and I didn't do nowhere close to that. Now, granted, I did get two limits, and I wasn't at the bottom. You know, I beat several people in the tournament. But at the same time, I expect to win because I, I, I feel like I'm good enough to do that, even against these best guys. And when I don't do, when I don't perform at my own expectations, I'm pushing myself that much harder to get there. You know, and that's just... I think every great athlete I've ever read or heard speak or had the pleasure of meeting and getting to know them, um, I've been very blessed to know. I mean, for instance, most people know as Kevin Van Dam is the man in fishing or was the man in fishing and still is by many respects. Um, not trying to sound both of them, but I got Kevin cell phone number. I mean, me and Kevin talk, you know, quite often. And me and Kevin see each other out, we hug each other's neck, and Gerald Swindle's another one. It's been, you know, Gerald has been very successful. He's never won but one national tournament, but he's won, you know, millions of dollars. And I talk to these guys, and I see how they do what they do. The same factor I see in every one of them that are champions is they push themselves so hard because they, they, they will not settle for mediocrity. You know, they, they will not settle and be content with being good enough. You know, it's like if I'm not the best, I'm forgetting. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to keep pushing. Yes, sir. Just curious, with, with everything that you do, I mean, you live and breathe fishing, family, I mean, everything that you do, do you have any hobbies? Do you do something outside of fishing? Is there time in your life for that? Or are you, is, because it's, it's your job, yes, and it's your passion. But a lot of folks, you know, they have that, but they have other things. Just curious, is there something else that you do that you consider fun, or are you? Oh, fun? yeah. Um, you know, <coughs> The funny, truthful answer to that would be fish. I mean, I don't know if I'm competing or not. I just love it, you know. But uh, honestly, I mean, other than that, obviously, my number one of hobbies is uh, my wife and I love mentoring kids, um, you know, trying to show them uh, how to live a life through Christ to, to make them the best they can be. And uh, we, we help a lot with the, our, our daughter and son-in-law are the youth ministers at our local home church. And uh, me and my wife are very involved when we are home, you know, in, in helping them. So it's, you know, it's all based around... Being, you know, being as godly as a man is is what I ever hope I can be. And uh, I honestly, like you say, people say, what are you going to do when you retire? I said, what am I going to do, retire and fish? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, buddy. Any pets? Dude, that's an awesome question. I don't think I've ever been asked that before. <laughs> we do. We actually have their names on the door of our trucks. we got a black lab named Terry. And she's about two years old, and she is spoiled rotten. She gets to ride in the truck everywhere Daddy goes from home. And uh, we have a little Shizu that's about 14 years old. It's William. He's mean as a rattlesnake. He is one of the, he's a horny little cuss. And uh, sometimes I just want to smack him. That, that, that's my wife, little pup. So. Yes, sir. How do you write? How do I write? You kids got some awesome questions. I put the pen between my nose and my finger and my upper lip, and... Do my head like that and write, and it does it's not pretty. <coughs> Let me go ahead and tell you, it's not chicken scratch. <laughs> yes, sir. What kind of seat belts do you use in your auto? What kind of seat belts do I use? Just the standard factory seat belts that come in the Toyotas. And uh, yes, they're, they're very effective. That's, uh, uh, I didn't have any of that. Any of that wasn't changed out you know, from factory. It's all factory seat belts. And, uh, of course, I don't use one in the boat, but uh, don't, don't need one in the boat, but I use just a factory pull you out of seat belt. I, I had a, a friend one time who had no legs, and actually he had uh, a totally part of his pelvis. Yes, sir. Bless his 
heart, that, that, that ain't good. <laughs> Just ask you, you got a question? Got green green. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, do you like to fish in ponds for brim? I do. I love fishing in ponds. When I, when I have time to do it, I don't have much time. But I love it. I love catching brim, crappie, you name it. Oh, here, bud. What's your best pro tournament finish? Best pro tournament finish? Oh, uh, sixth. Uh, when we finished the, uh, some of you might have heard of the PAA trail. It used to be really, it used to be really growing. It kind of faded away. On um, the very first PAA tournament they ever had was in Lake Fork in Texas. And uh, I fished it. It was a kind of a team format, but uh, we fished it. And uh, we actually were, they took the top five the last day for a chance of $250,000. And I went, the, my roommate was the last one to weigh in on the second day, and I was in fifth place, and he knocked me out by one ounce. Wow. And he did not know that until we got ready to go to supper that night, he, had, uh, he didn't realize I was in sixth. Well, when we got to go to supper, we were sitting there talking, and I looked at him, and I was kidding him, and I said, all right, well, I said, since you knocked me out at 250000 I expect you to win, and he'd already won $2.8 million in his career. I said, I guess since you knocked me out of two hundred fifty thousand dollars, I'm gonna let you buy my steak tonight. You know, messing with him, dude. He stopped and looked at me, and he started crying. And he says, "You mean to tell you that you were one spot under me?" I said, "Yes." <laughs> and he looked at me and said, "Dude, if I'd have known that, I would." I said, "No, nope, don't you even go there." I said, "I promise you." I said, "If I'm in fifth, you in sixth, I'm gonna try to beat your eyes out." <laughs> one more, one more question. Uh, you said been on the water all the time and in a boat going fast, <coughs> um, I was really impressed with you swimming. And I heard that question before we even started tonight. Um, so do you do you work on that a good bit just to be ready in case something ever happens in the boat? As far as swimming? Yeah. Uh, I don't work on it. I mean, as far as for that purpose. Now, my wife had an idea of putting a swimming pool in last spring and I went along with it as long as she let me use it as a lure test tank in the backyard. <laughs> Man, me and my stepson go out there and throw lures in it all the time, and she's scared we're gonna hook the ladder. But uh, I do love swimming for, um, you know, for exercise and, and stay and help stay in good shape. But as far as for, for that purpose, you know, it, I, I don't I don't worry about that. I mean, I I wear great you know, Mustang life preservers that you know that that I inflate, and also I'm gonna start carrying you know the old style with me just in case as well. But uh, no, I don't worry about it for that that purpose. I just love to swim. Yeah. Great great question, buddy.